OK, so we're going to look at principle of moments uh, in this video. And we're also going to look at weights on bridges uh, as well, because it's all linked. <coughs> so hopefully you can remember that the moment is the force times perpendicular distance from the pivot. So in our example here, uh, our force is 20 newtons. Perpendicular distance from the pivot is 0.5 meters, which gives us a moment of 10 newton meters. Okay, hopefully you can remember that. Uh, just remember that the perpendicular bit is important when stuff's at a funny angle, it's not at 90 degrees. Don't have to worry here because our angle, our force is at 90 degrees to our distance. So nice and simple. Um, so the key thing you're going to be using to solve this is the principle of moments, and it tells us that when the system is at equilibrium, uh, so that just means it's balanced, it's not moving, okay? So it's like if you're on a seesaw and it's just sort of hovering there, not going up, not going down, um, or you know your bridge isn't collapsing, or whatever. Uh, the total anti-clockwise moment is the total clockwise moment. Okay, so if you've got a beam and you've got five newton meters in the clockwise direction, then if it's balanced or if it's in equilibrium, you must have five newton meters in the other direction, the anti-clockwise direction. Remember we use clockwise and anti-clockwise because uh, saying up and down is not, not enough. Um, for example, here a downward force would cause uh, an anti-clockwise turning motion, whereas here an upward force would cause a clockwise turning motion. So you've just got to be careful to use uh, anti-clockwise and clockwise for our moments. So we can use our principle of moments to solve these sorts of questions. Okay, uh, so we're going to be trying to find what x is. So the first thing you want to do uh, is find any moments that you can. So any moments you've got enough information to find, do that first. So we've got 20 newtons there, and we've got 0.5 meters there. Well, we've already worked that one out. So we said 10 newtons times 0.5 meters gives us 20 newtons times 0.5 meters gives us our 10 newton meters. Yeah. So we know our anti-clockwise moment is 10 newton meters. And the second step of this solving process is to remember that the anti-clockwise moment equals the clockwise moment. Okay, don't write it like that, but I'm just short of space. So apply the principle. No, that's not how you spell apply. So apply the principle of moments. So we've now got 10 newton meters anti-clockwise. I must have 10 newton meters clockwise. 10 newton meters. 10 newton. <coughs> 10 newton meters anti-clockwise. 10 newton meters clockwise because we're assuming that our system is in equilibrium. Okay, we can't solve it if it's not in equilibrium. So we know we've got 10 newton meters, and we know we've got a force of 40 newtons. Okay, so um, we need to rearrange it to get perpendicular distance, which we're going to D, is equal to the moment divided by the force. Okay, I've got it x, but dx, I'm sure we can work that out. So D or X is the moment, so it's 10 newton meters divided by the force, which is 40 newtons, gives us 0.25 meters. Hopefully, that should make sense because if you can't solve these sorts of questions using the equation, you can sort of solve them using ratios. The 20 newtons is 0.5 meters away, the 40 newtons is twice as heavy. So to get the same amount of moment, same amount of turning effect, it's got to be twice as close to the pivot. Okay, or half as far from the pivot, if you wish. So the force is twice as big, so the perpendicular distance is half as small. Okay, so you can solve most moments problems if there's only very few going on with just simple ratios. Okay, so hopefully that helps. So our third step that we sort of didn't write down is which is what I just did. Okay. 
The other thing we've got to look at is this idea that the total force in one direction is equal to the total force in the other direction. So there's no net force. So that means if we go back to our system here, the total downward force is 60 newtons. There must be 60 newtons acting upwards. Otherwise, our system would be being pulled towards the ground. Okay, where's that force going to be applied? Do we think? Well, it's going to be applied here, which you can't really see, but that pivot makes a nice arrow. So let's use that. Okay, that's going to be 60 newtons acting up there. Okay, so try not to get moments confused with forces. Okay, it's the moments that must be equal for it to be in equilibrium. Clockwise moment must equal the anti-clockwise moment. But sometimes you'll be asked to find a force, and this is another way of doing it. Thinking about the total forces acting upwards, total forces acting down. That may have just confused you. If that happens, I apologise. So we'll move on quickly. So we've got to talk about bridges and light beams. Okay, there is a bridge that's going to be a long time to draw. You can appreciate it. Uh, now, this is a torch, obviously, and this is a beam of light. That's not the sort of light beams we're talking about. We're talking about a beam which isn't very heavy, i.e. the light beam. Uh, and all that means is we can just ignore the weight of the beam. So a light beam is a beam that we don't care how heavy it is. And this is often uh, perfectly fine to do because your beam might be 10, 20, 30 times lighter than the, the load that's on it. Okay, so we tend to, with bridge questions and light beam questions, we ignore the weight of the beam. So what I've done is I've simplified my drawing of the bridge down to the important bits. So I've got the force at A, which is, that's probably A and that's B there, isn't it? So the force at A is the supporting force provided by um, the ground at A, and force B is the upward supporting force of the ground at point B. We've now added a sort of object onto our beam um, that is X meters away from A, and it's got a weight W. So imagine this could be a bridge or it could be two people carrying a stick with a heavy object on it, and we've got to figure out who's or what's going to work hard, what's going to provide a bigger force? Is it A or B? And this confuses people, this question, so that's sort of why we're looking at it. If we think back to our rules for solving this, the system's obviously in equilibrium. It's not being tipped, it's not turning, it's not moving up, it's not moving down. Okay, so if it's in equilibrium, then the principle of moments must apply. Okay, so this time we're going to start, and we can't see purple and blue, at the principle of moments. Okay, so we start at the principle of moments. We know that the anti-clockwise moments must equal the clockwise moments. Okay, so that's the first step whenever answering these sorts of questions. Anti-clockwise moments equals clockwise moments. Now we can actually take moments any point uh, on this line, on this beam. We could take it at F A. We could take it at W. Or we could take it at F B. We're going to take moments about W, imagining that's our pivot. Okay? And because W is 0 meters away from itself, then we can ignore the force of W. Okay? You won't be expected to do this, but it's a nice way of proving what's going on. So, let's get some numbers. Okay? So, force A is 300 newtons and it's 0.25 meters away. Okay, so we can find any moments we can find. That was one of our rules earlier. So we do 300 times 0.25. Gives us 75 newtons. Okay. We know that if we've got... Oh, it's nice this way, actually, isn't it? We've got 75 newton meters there. I said newton meters, obviously. Um, we must also have 75 newton meters there. So we know that FB times 0.75 equals 75 newtons. Hopefully you can see where this is going. But FB is 75. God, I keep forgetting the newton meters. Apologies. 0.75 meters. meters. Uh, oh, I've done it again. Look at that. Uh, so FB 
is 100 newtons. Okay, so what this is telling us is that the person who is closest to the object, the person or the, the support that's closest to the heavy object, has to provide more force. And they have to provide more force because, let's write it again because it's super important, the principle of moments must be applied. Okay, so the total, well, this is clockwise moment, must equal the total anti clockwise moment. Okay, so how would you go about? Uh, Answering that sort of succinctly, um, so I've got to add this picture. So let's just draw it quick. Put W there. You've got person A there, and you've got person B there. <coughs> okay. So first thing is to say that the system is in equilibrium. So therefore, the clockwise moment. equals anti-clockwise moment. Yeah. So just applying we'll go on to the blue. Just applying the principle of moments. Because the weight is closer to A, the force from A must be greater than the force from B. So my handwriting's going to pot a bit. Greater then force from B to achieve the same moment. Okay. So one of the reasons people get confused is because they're used to moments questions being about sort of leverage. So if you've got sort of a paint can and you've wedged the screwdriver in and you're getting a big moment because you are further away than from the pivot than if you're trying to do it with your fingernails. Okay. Here, the moments have to be equal. The clockwise moment has to be equal to the anti-clockwise moment. Okay. Otherwise, the system wouldn't be in equilibrium. So we start the fact that the system is in equilibrium. Clockwise moment equals anti-clockwise moment because the weight is closer to A. Then to achieve the same moment as the one being caused by B, then because the distance is smaller, the weight B, force from A, has to be bigger. Okay. So hopefully, that's helped you with moments and bridges. Okay. If you just remember, apply the principle of moments, and you'll be fine. Okay. So that clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment are equal. Obviously, I've drawn them the wrong way around said it the wrong way around if you wish but just remember I've got 10 newton meters there and the system is in equilibrium I must have 10 newton meters there and use that to solve what's going on and you'll be fine <laughs>